it's your testimony that there is no evidence of collusion between plaintiffs initiating uh, these litigations that result in consent decrees and federal regulatory agencies. We didn't even look for collusion. The first time that word was ever brought up was, was today. This, the purpose of the study was to literally do a search, a legal search, to find out how many of these cases existed. And that search got started by the very simple fact that at a prior hearing, one of, one of the other side said, well, there are very few of these, or only a handful. And we asked the very simple question, how many? And then we started hearing from Well, thank you. No, I asked, okay. I, I asked the question uh, simply because in public comments that have been made by members of this body, not necessarily present here today, in support of this legislation, the allegation has been made that the problem the legislation seeks to address relates to backroom deals or collusion or conspiracy that has taken place to undermine the capacity of American citizens or others to be involved in the rulemaking that takes place at these federal agencies. But I'm thankful that you're saying that that is not a position that you agree with. Now, would you, would you take the position that under the Obama administration there has been an explosion of consent decrees unlike in previous administrations? Well, look, consent decrees have been going on, uh, these types of agreements, and we would argue that when the business community does it, it's just as they, they shouldn't do it any more than the environmental community. We, we have a problem with the process because we think the transparency should be in the process. And during the Reagan administration, uh, Attorney General Meese outlawed the process with a very strong memorandum, which has later been, uh, been morphed into some filing, some, some administrative language in the CFR, but it really doesn't do anything. The old Meese one is gone. There, the records only go back, just so you know, only to 1995, so that was the best we could do. And using computers to find them, what we were able to do using just the Clean Air Act is it seemed that it was around 20 to 30 bopping around be, be, uh, Clinton, Bush, Clinton, uh, uh, then, then... Oh, thank you. I'm familiar with, with the, and, with the and process. Then, oh, then familiar Obama, with it went up to around 60. So it, it, it doubled or tripled. Now, let me ask a question about consent decrees, just uh, so that we have it in the record. Consent decrees are essentially settlement agreements backed by a judgment, correct? That's correct. And in other words, those consent decrees are judicially approved. Is that correct? That's correct. So there really is no backroom deal. This is a courtroom agreement, correct? Well, that's exactly where the problem comes in. Because what, and, and this is why we are so concerned. Because in so many of these, what we would call deadline cases, the real concern is how you set the schedule. It's not really an administrative decision there. It's really a discretionary decision. Because that's how the rule is going to be put into effect and that's how they're going to determine what, what they're going to do. So now, there's been some reference to our constitutional fabric, uh, including uh, in testimony that you previously gave as it relates to what our citizens should be legitimately demanding from the federal government. Now, consistent with that constitutional fabric, am I correct that uh, under Article Three of the Constitution, the federal courts uh, have the authority to interpret the law? Is that a fair statement? Actually, if you're talking about the federal courts and you're talking about how we're structuring it here, the federal courts are courts of limited jurisdiction. And the jurisdiction that they have comes from Congress. And the way that right now, and this is a, this is a, this is. So you don't believe rules. that the federal courts have jurisdiction as it relates to federal Martin, agency Madison. regulation? Pardon? You don't believe that federal courts have jurisdiction as it relates to how to interpret regulations? Uh, that federal when, agencies have issued or should issue pursuant is, to con a congressional case, statute? When a case is before the federal court, they certainly have the constitutional authority to interpret the law and, into, and to interpret the regulations. The difficulty that you have with these consent decrees is the court's treating these the same as it would treat a private party. For example, if you and I had a contractual dispute and we, and we came to a settlement agreement, we would just file that with the court, get a consent decree, and it would be enforceable by the both of us. Well, let me the, reclaim you know, the balance. I of, just, because I think this would really let me just reclaim the balance of my time. I want to give Mr. Walk an opportunity to respond uh, to that statement that was made. Uh, sure. I, I, I direct your attention to page 17 of my written testimony where, the, you know, the chamber report, um, 
re resorted to some uh, eyebrow raising language for me, uh, impugning the federal courts, uh, uh, accusing them of, quote, rubber stamping agreements um, between federal agencies and outside plaintiffs. And I just think it's unsubstantiated in the report, first of all, but it, it's kind of of the same flavor that, that permeates their indictment of Congress for passing these laws that give citizens the right to hold government accountable and courts rubber stamping them. You know, everyone seems to bear a lot of fault except for the, the, the industry parties that want to get into these settlements and prevent the law from being enforced. I mean, this is what this is about. It's not about transparency. EPA has started putting up their notices of, of lawsuits on the web. I think they were late coming to that. I actually agree with Mr. Kovacs about that. We should have transparency. We should not have obstruction of law enforcement, and that's what this bill does. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know my time has expired. Thank you. Um, we appreciate